are just wrapping up a session here on a Monday night here at Oaks Card Club in Emeryville. This is a city adjacent to Oakland. I've done a vlog here before, but it's been a really long time. And Asher wasn't recording tonight either, but there was one epic hand that happened. So I raised a 20 from under the gun with ace queen offsuit. Player to my direct left, three bets to 120. He's a big action player and he was playing blackjack prior to poker and playing anywhere from 500 to 1,000 a hand. Guys. <laughs> this is a good man right here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that was Bruno back there, one of the floor staff, really cool guy. But back to the hand, the small blind ends up cold calling the 120, and it gets to me. I'm playing 1030 in my stack, and I decided to just go with it, given that I think small blind's kind of weak, and I'm happy to gamble it up with the player to my left. Well, the action player snap calls the all-in, and the other player in the small blind ends up jamming as well for 950. Guy to my direct left has ace king offsuit, so in really rough shape. The guy in the small blind has 5 7 offsuit. And just want to give a shout out to Carlos at the table. First time meeting him tonight. I don't know if he watches the vlog, but if he does, shout out to him. He caught video footage of the hand. All right, go ahead. 5 7. I'm going back to blackjack, man. A thousand dollars and a five seven, man. Yeah, go, baby. Go, let's go. I'm out of here. I'm going back to blackjack. Five seven's good. All right, let's go. Oh, five! He won. Yeah. Oh my God. So the flop came no help. The turn being a five was a pretty pivotal card. It gave the player with 5-7 the lead, and it also gave me chop outs, but that river came through, and I think I titled the Hamul vlog, Dirty Lady on 5th Street. This was a clean lady on 5th Street. So yeah, I'm usually pretty numb to both good beats and bad beats. Some of that is natural, but I also kind of train for it since you kind of need to stay level-headed to play this game effectively. But I'll admit, I'm pretty ecstatic to take that one down in the fashion that I did. Pretty dramatic, and just really lucky. And so I was in the game for $1,500 out for $28.25, book a profit of $13.25. And I'm gonna try to build from here. Probably we'll play more often at the Oaks Card Club. Really good action tonight. And we'll try to do another proper vlog here sometime soon, but also continue to mix my time in San Jose. I'm really liking that 2-5 deep game at the Matrix. So with that, it's gonna wrap it up for whether this is an intro, outro, not sure yet. All right, back at the usual lucky chances. Before I dive into the hands, just want to give a shout out to some people that I met. Min Q, Elliot, Ruben, Eroni, Preston, Anthony, Adam, J Raj, Steve, Asan, and fellow poker content creator Yuki, who goes by Sashimi on YouTube. She was also on Live at the Bike fairly recently. Definitely recommend checking her content out. Just want to give a shout out to everyone for their vlog support. Okay, playing the 3-5 no limit, and the first notable spot comes when I'm in the hijack with pocket nines and a raise to 20. Big blind calls, and we go heads up to a flop of 8-5-4 rainbow. He checks, and a pretty standard c-bet here, so I make it 25. He calls. So here comes the 5 of hearts, pairing the board and putting up a heart draw. He checks, and I'm going to keep up with the aggression, hoping to target an 8, and also protect my hand. I bet 75, and he pretty quickly folds. Nice start to the session. I expect to get some flack in this next spot. I raise a 20 from the low jack with pocket queens. It gets over to the small blind, who decides to put in a 3 bet to 60. I just flat, and we go heads up to a flop of queen 9 3 with two clubs and a diamond. So I flop top set on a board that contains both straight and flush draws. He decides to down C bet it for 45, and I play it fast and I raise it to 145. He pretty quickly folds, so feel free to roast away on me playing top set fast in position. Next hand, there are four limpers before it gets to me in the small blind with ace queen of spades. I raise the 40 and only the cutoff calls. Heads up to a flop of king queen 10, two hearts and a diamond. I see bet 45 and he calls with 360 back. Turn comes a seven of spades and with around 200 in the pot and him having 360, it's a weird spot for bet sizing. If I just go half to two thirds, it leaves a roughly half pot bet on the river which is fine, but the board texture is a bit dangerous. And although the king is a non-heart making it possible for my opponent to have me crush with top pair and a heart draw, there aren't too many combos of those hands, and I feel like I would have heard from him on the flop. That said, I feel like I've got the best hand, and if he wants to draw, he's going to have to pay the max. I rip, 
And after some deliberation, he lets it go. Next spot, under the gun raises to 20. I'm next to act with pocket aces. I decided to just flat and play this one deceptively. The big blind calls as well. Three ways to a flop of 984. Checks to me. I bet 40. Only the big blind calls. Heads up to a turn of a three of spades. So a good card is it doesn't complete any draws. Big blind checks. I bet 100. He calls with 350 back. Looking for a clean river to go for all of it. It comes to nine of diamonds. So not clean. And now my opponent leads for 145. He's likely got one of three hands being a nine that beats me. Or an eight that is block betting. Or a missed draw like jack 10 or hearts. All that in mind. Aces is going to be a call here most of the time. I put in the chips. And he tables. Ace 10 of hearts. So the pre-flop slow play works out this time. We're seven handed in this next spot. I raise the 20 from under the gun with ace queen offsuit. Hijack puts in a three bet, but it's a min raise to 40. I decided to just call and we go to a flop of king jack seven with two clubs and a diamond. Decent flop with a gutter to the nuts, but this should smash my opponent's three betting range. And I'm especially suspicious given that his three bet pre was a min raise. I check, he bets 55, not going away just yet, I call. We go to a turn of a king of clubs. So an interesting card is it gives me the second enough flush draw. I check and my opponent slows down this time. Feels like it could be possible though that my opponent can have ace king and is afraid of the club. We go to a river of a jack of hearts. So another interesting card. I don't think he has a jack too often, but on a double paired board where my opponent can have ace king, it's going to be very hard for me to make a play on this hand. If the board didn't pair, I think I can rep some flushes with the queen of clubs in my hand. Long story short though, I check and he fairly quickly checks back and rolls over pocket aces. That hand makes some sense too and not sure a bet would have worked on my end. He takes this one down. Next hand I pick up nines again, this time from under the gun and I raise to 20. Only the small blind calls. Heads up to a flop of jack three deuce with two spades and a club. He checks and I decide to check this one back. The turn comes the eight of spades and this time he leads for 20. I just call. River comes an offsuit for I believe, and this time he bets 25. Feels like value with either a jack or an eight. Could potentially turn my hand into a bluff, but feels pretty close. And I end up just calling, and he tables queen jack offsuit to take it down. The bluff route would have been better. Next hand, the straddle is on, and I race the 35 from the cutoff with ace nine offsuit. It's a hand that is difficult to navigate, but I decide to mix it up a bit, and I get calls from the big line and the straddler. Three ways to a flop of King Jack 10, two clubs and a heart. Checks to me, and I'm just gonna see bet range here. $50, only the big blind calls. Turn comes a King of Spades, and it's a good card to keep barreling to rep strong hands, particularly since I block Ace King. He checks, and this time I bet 125. He pretty quickly folds, and I may have had the best hand against something like a club draw, but definitely okay with denying those types of hands and locking this one. Next hand, the button limps and the small blind completes. I'm in the big blind with pocket kings and a race of 30. Only the button calls and we go heads up to a flop of king 8-4 with two diamonds and a heart. So I flop top set on a board that contains some draws. I check in an effort to induce, but he doesn't take the bait and checks back. The turn comes a deuce of spades and this time I bet 30 looking to target a hand that contains an 8. Maybe something like ace 5 or even 5-6 that picks up a double gutter and he makes the call. The river comes. A three of diamonds so not the best card as it completes diamonds and some straights but just gonna keep going for value and react accordingly should he put in a raise i bet 70. he doesn't raise though and instead puts in the call that's good news i roll it over and scoop this one with top set five handed in this next spot hijack raises to 20 and i'm on the cutoff with ace king offsuit i three bet it to 60 and i get calls from the button big blind and hijack. We go four ways to a flop of jack eight three, all diamonds. Checks to me, and with ace of diamonds in my hand and overpair range advantage, I see bet 130, button in the big blind fold. Hijack, who was the initial raiser pre-flop, puts in the call. Heads up to a turn of a three of hearts, and the hijack checks again, and I'm gonna keep applying pressure. I'm only afraid of pocket jacks and pocket eights, and can put pressure on everything else, namely nines and tens. And of course, it helps to have the nut flush blocker. I bet 250. He goes into the tank and after some deliberation, he wants to know if he'll be on the vlog if he shows his hand. I give him the positive head nod. He shows pocket sixes and lets it go. Shout out to Preston in his hand, although he was ahead 
it was a good fold because I'm 100% getting there on the river. Five-handed once again, I raise the 15 from the button with Jack-10 of clubs. Both blinds defend and we go to a flop of 10 3 rainbow. Top pair, mediocre kicker, backdoor draws. Small blind decides to lead for 40. Big blind folds and not too sure where small blind is at, so I just call to evaluate a turn. Fourth street comes, the king of clubs. So I pick up a club draw. He continues the aggression, $100 with $250 back. Feels pretty close between calling or raising. Not sure either would be an error, but after some deliberation, I decided to jam to press my equity. Can still get called by worse against hands such as 7-10, 9-10, straight draws. And if he has a better 10 like queen 10 or ace 10, I think those hands might have to fold some percentage of the time. Anyways, he calls pretty quickly and tables king 8 off suit. Gonna need help going into the river, which comes the ace of hearts. No help, and I double this man up. Last time to run through, I raised the 20 from under the gun with a7 of hearts. Button and big blind call, and we go three ways to a flop of queen 7 4 with two spades and a club. Big blind checks, I see bet 40, and both the button and big blind call. Continuing three ways to a turn of a king of hearts. Big blind checks again, I check this time, and the button jams for around $200. Big blind folds, and I take for a bit, and I actually think it's pretty close. My main concern is a king high flush draw that turns top pair. I'm kind of ruling out a queen since I don't think it would play this way. So you can also have a ton of spade draws as well as 5-6 would make a lot of sense. But after some deliberation, I decided to take the safe round and just let it go. Shout out to Adam who won this hand. Okay. All right, it's Tuesday the 1st. Just finished a session here at the usual Lucky Chances. I'm taking a different walk than normal. I normally park in the parking lot downstairs, but today was a special occasion. Mariano Poker was in town, and I blame that man for making me park across the street. But it was a really fun time today. I didn't get to play with Mariano. He was in the 510. I was over at the 3-5. I had a chance to meet him for the first time, chatted with him, really cool guy, obviously great poker content. But yeah, today was one of the most fun poker sessions I've played in a long time. Uh, Doug McCusker was also here, another vlogger from the Sacramento area. Make sure to check out his channel. And primarily with Mariano being in town, it seems like a lot of people came out to support, come meet him, play with him. And that really created a very nice meetup game atmosphere. As for the poker, I bought him for $1,000. Didn't have to add on, I cashed out 1,650, so book a profit of 650. Nice to take some of that, run good momentum from last night at Oaks Card Club, and bring it over to today. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Today definitely reminds me of what a meetup game type atmosphere can feel like. So I may need to look into doing some more proper meetup games. Only did one prior to COVID, and would be great to maybe kick some of those off again, see if any of you are interested in coming out to play and potentially collaborate with some other poker content creators as well. So with that, thanks for the support. See you guys on the next one.